Hello, everyone. You are listening to the C Squared podcast with Corey, Curtis, and our babysitter, Holly, is joining us today because let's face it, me and Curtis, we, we need some guidance. We need some supervision most of the time. And we're going to be telling you today all about how awesome Holly is, why we started working with her, everything that she can do, and what she brings to the C Squared team. Yes. And I'm going to start it off by getting Holly to reintroduce herself for anyone who does not know who she is um, and her background, please. Sure. So um, my background, well, started off mostly like being a musician. So I started doing keyboard, guitar. Um, I've been in various like rock and metal bands and stuff over the years. And then I got into music journalism. And then through that, I discovered the whole wonderful world of music PR. Mm -hmm. um, and so I decided to, yeah, give it a go. And I launched a company called Deviate PR about two years ago now. It's all coming up to about two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and then about a month ago, maybe slightly longer, um, I was introduced to these lovely people. And suddenly I've been like incorporated into the company. <laughs> so <laughs> well, and we're not sure how you did. The same thing well, happened to me if it makes you feel any better. Yeah. It's like we just all get absorbed over time. I feel as though that's kind of how it works. I just devour you guys, and you guys think you're devouring me is the fucking whole problem. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> so, okay, so Holly, you've been here for like two months, I think. No, yeah, April. April. You've been oh, yeah. here for April. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so can you kind of go, go over how you kind of uh, networked in order to uh, slither your way into the company and, uh, you know, take control? Yeah. Well, I, I've sort of been, I can't remember how I first got into your um, music marketing mixer group on Facebook, mm -hmm. but I've been in that for quite a while, mm -hmm. actually, I think sort of just lurking for a bit. And then I just happened to share one of your Facebook posts. And then I suddenly get a message <laughs> being like, hey, do, do you want to come on the podcast? Um, I have a question. Go on. So what, Already? What, so, yeah. <laughs> I have a question. I'm going to give this one to Corey too. So, did you think it was a trap? I don't. Yeah. I don't think I thought it was a trap necessarily. I I was just kind of like, I'm really small, and this mm -hmm. seems to be like an, an industry podcast that's got quite a few big people on it. So I was just like, okay, cool. This might go somewhere, but why is he asking me? <laughs> sort of thing. Fair enough. Okay, so. Um, so you didn't really think it was a trap, but you kind of thought, but you were kind of puzzled as to what was going on. Is that, is that, okay, cool. So then, so once, once we asked you to join C squared slash do PR, what was rolling to your head at that moment? Yeah, I, I was pretty confused to be honest when, when that happened. Cause again, I was like, okay, these people barely know me. <laughs> um, I've been in the industry like five minutes from like a PR perspective anyway um yes it's like I mean again I didn't think it was a trap but I I was just very like this is very fast <laughs> um, who, are you, who are you more scared of me or Corey just out of curiosity <laughs> I mean <laughs> well you're both sort of terrifying for different reasons I guess different reasons <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, I kind of, it's, it's one of those things I kind of was sort of, I guess, slightly intimidated because you're both, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. quite well known and sort of high up with things. But at the same time, I was kind of like, well, you're just people. So it's yeah. kind of, you know. Fair. Those. Fair. Fair. Corey, what, Corey, what were you thinking when we hired her? How, how bad did you want to eat her at first? <laughs> Okay, so my very popular belief, I do not eat adults. I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> oh, no, I, I was excited to have Holly join the team. Um, I mean, personality-wise, you seem like somebody who can take a client that's really nervous and actually calm them down. You have a very calming personality. I could already tell that you were really smart and very driven because, I mean, you started just, you dove right in doing this on your own. And um, I really respected that. But it's, a lot of it is, it comes down to your personality because we do deal with a lot of, you know, high stress situations and, and people who are freaking out that something's going wrong. And I, I knew you'd be able to keep people grounded. If that makes sense. That's good, that's good to know. 
<laughs> Ollie's like the British mom is what she is. That's younger than all of us. That's younger. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that. Okay, so Holly. Oh, all my children uh, are younger than me, too, or older than me too. So it's okay. Well, yeah, but mm -hmm. anyways, okay. So, um, so Holly starts off with us. Um, she's totally terrified. Starts interning. Um, so just before that, let's kind of go back over your background a little bit more because uh, we're trying to pump you up a little bit here. So you've been doing DV8, I think, was for a year and a half, correct? Yeah, yeah. Sort of coming up to two years in October. It'll be. Oh. Cool. And in that time period, how many campaigns roughly did you run? Did you run? I want to say approximately like 15 full um, PR campaigns for releases and then just like random other little bits of, you know, social media stuff and consultancy and all that, all that jazz. Cool. So 15 total. Okay. And then uh, would you say that you were doing well with the clients? I think so. I mean, they were all, you know, fairly underground. I never started with anyone who was particularly big um but they all seem to do reasonably well in terms of like traction and and reaching like some new people so cool yeah okay cool so okay so then you started with us you were completely terrified you didn't know what was going on you thought you were going to be eaten thought you'd been kidnapped by a cult in the whole nine yards so mm -hmm. now how do you feel like how how quickly did you do you think it took you to really feel like you were a part of uh c squared and you weren't just like that girl that we kind of get to do honestly not long at all because i mean um you had me start on a uh, wretches campaign which had already sort of started a bit anyway so i came into it like halfway through um and that was really useful for just sort of figuring out the way which you in particular do things because obviously you know every pr agent does stuff slightly differently um, and it was useful getting to grips with like, you know, Pollux and databases and all that sort of thing, because that's a bit different to how I do it. Um, mm -hmm. So it was kind of, yeah, just kind of like a useful sort of mentoring, I guess, almost mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I mean, John's really was like, I think it helped that he was really chill and like yeah. nice to work with as well anyway. So that felt like it took a little bit of the pressure off. Fair um, enough. Because yeah, it was only like a few days after or something, wasn't it, that you were like, Hey, here's a paid job. <laughs> you yep. to go and do this. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, okay. They're not trying to, you know, take advantage of me or anything like that. That you know of yet. That I know of yet. It could, it could get worse. Who knows? I mean, it's only been two months, and we've treated yeah. you really, quickly, so you know, it could get really, really bad, really, really quickly. Um, Corey, do you have any, do you have any thoughts on how long it took uh, Polly to become uh, part of the uh, clan? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I knew she was going to become part of the the clan the moment you were like, we're going to intern her because you you follow this pattern because you did the exact same thing with me. Okay. Where it's here, yeah, I'll let you intern a week later. Oh, here you go. Here's some more paid stuff. It's it, it's your pattern. You've done the same thing with Gaia too. Yep. It, yeah, it does not take long. <laughs> no, and I did the same thing with Morash. I think we, we kind of did the same thing with Aaliyah too. Haven't done really done that with Aaron yet, but yeah, okay, fine. So okay, so. Um, for culture wise, do you, how, how did you kind of find it at first, Holly? Because I, I know we're weird. I know we, I know we say a lot of things. Um, I know we operate really differently, but just out of curiosity, yeah. how did you find it since you're a lot more polite than we are, at least you seem to be. I think what it is, it's just very different to like previous working environments for me because some of them have been really well, not not like dead corporate and professional, but more along those lines. So I kind of I think went into it like I've got to be really like I don't know professional <laughs> with these guys just in case I like to, I don't know make them regret the decision. And then as soon as I realized, oh wait, no, they're all weird. That's fine. I can settle it <laughs> now. <laughs> I mean that in the best way. You are the best. I got to say that you are the best. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what to say on that one. Corey, take over for a second. <laughs> Never leave me in charge. That's like the worst decision. Like, all you is just the thought of me being in charge right now. Oh, a second. Oh, okay, you just say something intelligent, Corey. <laughs> Again, that is beyond my capabilities. Like, we, we got to be realistic here when it comes to okay. anything I'll take, that I'll I say and do. I'm taking over. So, Corey, 
you kind of explain how, how we make this fun culture, this to this untoxic, uh, but yet crazy culture? Well, I think it's simply just because we are all, we all have the same goal um, and it's not clout chasing. Like none of us are in this to make a name for ourselves. Nope. We're in this to make a name for our clients. Yep. So I think that's why we all work together. I mean, we all have different backgrounds. We all have different skill sets but we all have the same goal of not being like the people that are in the industry that are the clout chasers that will, you know, drop people to go work with a big name that will take advantage of a small client who doesn't know any better because they are out there. They're freaking everywhere. And I mean, we all have the same goal of getting rid of those people or at the very least providing a good solid alternative to those people. Mm -hmm. um, know that they can come to us and they can get these <clears throat> results and I mean there are times when things don't work out but people know with us that we'll all work our asses off for our clients yeah even if it doesn't necessarily work out um so one other thing too is that um we're also very passionate about making sure our clients do results when when, mm -hmm. when at all possible so Holly can you kind of go over um what you can do for people in order to make sure they get results on the spot <laughs> oh that's a lot of pressure um of yeah I mean I like to think like sort of broadly speaking I like to think it helps that I mean because I've got experience in music journalism and I've got experience with my band stuff yeah. it's kind of I, I kind of know what both sets of people are, are looking for so it's kind of if a band obviously they've got their concerns around something yeah. I can hopefully then advise them in the best way to like okay we're gonna you know pitch in this manner to the journalists or we're gonna include this information or this or this um, because I know that's what they'll be looking for um, and stuff like that. So it hopefully, it makes life, I'm trying to make life as easy as possible for the journalists so that they are, you know, more inclined to maybe take on the stuff and give it the time. Mm -hmm. um, but also trying to make life as easy as possible for the bands. <laughs> so it's like, Fair enough. you know, cool. I'm, yeah. No, keep talking. That wasn't that, okay, you want to keep going. Okay, uh, what else? I mean, it's, you know, I do a lot of biographies and I do a lot of the writing side of things. So obviously it's kind of whenever I do the press releases, I'm always going to write them to try and make the band sound as good as possible. But it's like, I'm never going to put any falsehoods in there. Like, I'm never going to write anything that isn't true. Um, you know, so it's kind of like, but I'm also trying to make them sound as unique as possible so that it really, like, um, how do I phrase this? Sort of puts across their, like, unique identity so that, you know, whoever opens it up can be like, okay, this band are different because they do X, Y, Z. Fair enough. No, I like that. Um, so have you found, and be honest on this, because if you haven't, that, that's totally fine. Have you found that us kind of um, going over what you're writing has helped or has it, or do you feel like it's kind of restrained you at all out of curiosity? I'd say it's mostly helped because there's obviously oh. those times, you know, I mean, you guys have been doing this for longer than I have anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think that it does help. Um, I know I the only slight, <laughs> I guess the only slight thing is I like to put lots and lots of information in. And I know sometimes I think it's probably slightly too much for what you guys like to do, which is yeah. fine. Like I'm um, that I'd rather put too much in and then take it out than not put enough in in the first place. So, yeah, I, I think I would agree with that. Corey, what do you think? When If someone puts in, do you, would you rather have too much and then we edit it or do, would you rather have too little? I think it's, yeah, it's definitely an easier process to go from too much to less than if you're adding more. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of the opposite of cooking, where yeah. you want to, <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to words, you want to start with more and then trim it down. Start with more and trim it down. I like that. Okay, so Holly, so when someone starts to work with you specifically, um, or us, I guess is what I should say. So what is the process for actually starting, assuming they're paid, they've got the contract and the whole nine yards have been approved by me and Corey, we all like them. What would then be the next steps a band would go through prior to starting? Um, it's, I think dates and scheduling. I mean, sometimes it's not always possible to, you know, put a solid date on every single thing right at the beginning, but yeah. at least if we have a fixed release date, then it's like can kind of work backwards and think, okay, well, you know, so many weeks beforehand, we need to get the premiere done or, you know calls for interviews however 
long before and things like that. And it also gives me a time frame of, okay, I need to get the press release done tomorrow or I need to get it done next week. You yep. know, little things like that. What would you say would be a proper, or not maybe not proper, but how much time is needed in order to get everything ready before you send out that first press release or press kit? <clears throat> I'll be, to be honest, I think it depends on how organized the client is. Fair. Because if they give us everything up front, then I'd, you know, probably say like even a couple of days or something, maybe a week. Yeah. Because it's all there to then just put together and send out. Um, yeah, the only slightly frustrating thing is sometimes, you know, you're chasing up for like an extra photo or just yeah. little, little snippets of information or just something's missing and you think, I don't want to send it out without it. Yeah, no, I totally understand. Uh, Corey, would you, how long would you say would be an appropriate time between paying for campaign and starting? I, I, I want to hear everybody's opinion on this. I have my own ideas, but I'm not giving it away. Honestly, again, yeah, it kind of depends on the client and whether or not they're on the ball getting us everything that we need. Um, yeah. I mean, and there's just, it comes down to that, really. I mean, paying for a, a campaign and getting it up and running in a week is possible and doable, but the client has to be able to give us all of the assets to do it. Yeah, I'd, I'd say about a week to a week and a half would be the time frame there because um, I, th I think from the time they pay to the time it goes out should be a week and a half max, depending upon workload. Like obviously if you guys have a lot of stuff backlogged already, it might take a few days longer than that. But I think as a general rule, it should be about a week to a week and a half. Okay, so Holly, they've started and uh, they started going. So how often do you check in with people, if at all? I try to check in with people. Oh, do you mean the band or do you mean journalists or both? Well, I'm talking about the band, like the client. I would try and do as regularly as possible, but it's kind of, I don't necessarily like checking in if I don't have anything relevant to give them. Fair. I don't know if that sort of makes sense. Like I, I feel like it's kind of, oh, I'm bothering them without a reason. Um, but at the same time, obviously, I want to make sure that whenever, you know, something, whether it's something new comes in or I've got a question or there's just something else they were scheduling that we thought of, I would, you know, try and get in touch as quickly as possible, partly so everything keeps moving um, yeah. and yeah. not held up with anything. But also, yes, yeah, so then they know what's going on. Yeah, it depends upon the client personally is what I think. Some people like to be handheld through things and checked in yeah. on all the time. Other people don't. Uh, what are your thoughts, Corey? I mean, checking, uh, you kind of got to read the client because there's some clients that, like Holly said, definitely need some hand holding and yep. they're very active in wanting to know what their, uh, what their campaign is doing. Um, definitely checking in with them whenever they have something new published is important, not only for them to see the results, but also for them to, to share and create that engagement. Mm -hmm. Um, but I would say, you know, like once a week is what I usually like to do um, with my, yeah. my client, like uh, if I'm managing an ad or something like that. So different from PR, I like to give somebody a weekly report on how things are doing. Yep. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a little bit different on that. Sometimes I go two to three weeks. Uh, sometimes I do a week. It depends. Um, I always tag the person in uh, social media posts if, if the band has uh, coverage or whatever. So I would assume they see it, but I know. A lot of times with Facebook, especially people don't get the notifications, but I always do try to tag on Twitter or Instagram as well. So that way they can kind of know what's happening <clears throat> or just kind of like check in with the band representative once every couple of weeks minimum, but sometimes more. Um, so Holly, how do you feel that you um, are different or unique in your customer service experience out of curiosity? I mean, am I allowed to say that being British helps? I mean, I don't know if it does help, but you guys seem to think it helps. <laughs> Anything helps. You just tell us what you can help. I mean, sometimes British doesn't help because a lot of British no, have bad teeth and then they eat, eat mm. fish all the time and they just fucking, you know. I mean, maybe you eat fish, but you don't have bad teeth. So, do you eat fish? <laughs> this is not going where I thought it was going. <laughs> making this weird. I keep making this weird. This is me. Has to go off the rails at some point. Come on, Holly. <laughs> so, British, okay. So you read a lot of Harry Potter, okay? Good. What else? <laughs> Corey's gonna get fucking kill me. I can feel it. Uh, 
I'm okay. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I like being, you know, I like being upfront with people, like not in a horrible way or anything like that. But if something happens, I don't like to, you know, go all the way around the houses to sort of say something. I'll just try and make it as easy to understand as possible so that people know exactly where they are. Um, cool. And I, yeah, just try and be sort of, well, I always try and be friendly with people because it's, you know, nice. <laughs> like, yeah. I think it's nice to be nice to people. I agree. Well, I also, you got that British sarcasm going too, which is kind of matches, I think, with what we got going because we're a little bit more blunt and rude in the way that we uh, tease people. But yeah. you're, I, I just, I don't know. I have a bit of a filter, so it's like I'm usually thinking what you're saying. I'm just not saying it. <laughs> like... fair. fair enough. Fair enough. So you're you're able to withhold. You're able to withhold the uh, rude remarks while we just kind of spew them out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Corey, were you going to say something? No, no. I'm just going to let you continue to go off the rails. <laughs> Fine, whatever. Um, actually, I was going to swing it back over to you to ask Holly a question because you haven't said anything for a minute. How do you put up with us, Holly? Was... <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, I find it fun. I do. I find it fun being around you guys. That's good. That's yeah. good. It's, it's very entertaining for me. <laughs> <laughs> so let, 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 let me add to that so okay so um when you're getting weird gifts when we're doing um calls yeah and you're distracted mm. is this something that <laughs> you ever expected to ever have happened in a professional working relationship no. you mean, being like for example um someone with a major name who i will not say because i don't want them to hear this and know that know what was going on and <laughs> getting distracted with I, this. I just oh, I mean I'm as long as they can't see me smirking or sniggering it's fine but I don't know that <laughs> like I don't know that they haven't seen anything right. it's like cool. they're either gonna think I'm weird or I don't know they're gonna think I'm laughing at them which I'm not and then but, I don't know just as so long you as there don't burn any bridges it's fine to any of our clients who ever see us smirking or you know sniggering on a call we're not laughing at you it's curtis's fault Just yeah so. you do it too you do it too you do do it too not you to holly do. i don't no don't she be. doesn't do it to me <laughs> she doesn't i'm <laughs> nice to our people i'm nice to her she just said she enjoyed it right yeah you i mean i kind of wanted to punch you in the face last night a little bit but it's like when, when you see the Oh man, if you could see the footage where you were just like trying to hide your smirk as I just kept doing it, it was amazing. Oh. <laughs> like, I didn't know what was going on. That was fucking hilarious. Um, what was mm. I going to You're a terrible person, Curtis. I am a terrible person, but it's. And this is probably the least helpful podcast. No, this is very. <laughs> we're going over Holly and Holly, how awesome Holly is. So, Holly, let 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 let's let's get back onto something else here, which is like, okay, so you you do a lot of cust customer service with the person. So, what would you do if, for example, the campaign is going off the rails and it's not doing very well? Um, I think um, part of that, I'll try chasing up with the journalists first. I think because it's, I mean, sometimes it's hard to tell if a campaign is doing badly because maybe people are missing it or yep. they don't like it or something else has happened that I don't know about or um so it's I, I think yeah try and you know talk to people directly and just see if there is a reason that comes back as to why things are doing well or not doing well sure. um and then obviously you know I mean the clients are going to find out at some point anyway aren't they because there's no way to unfortunately something's not doing very well I'm not going to go around and say, okay, you know, you've got this when you haven't. Yeah. Um, fair. So I think it's just being straight with people. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, so, okay. So let's say now when a campaign, how would you try kind of judge if a campaign is doing well? I mean, part of it is going off um, like the data in Hall. I mean, that's quite useful to see because then at least you get an idea of how many people are opening it up in the first place or taking a look at it. Mm -hmm. um, obviously looking at like the types of features or reviews or the amount of people perhaps like asking for interviews and things like that but I think also maybe the nature of the reviews is quite 
be interesting to look at because if there's like a particular theme that starts to arise you know like say loads of journalists sort of I don't know maybe if they do or don't like something but it all seems to be for the same reason yeah that might be quite an interesting thing to take into consideration so I think there's a few different you know there's quite a few different things to sort of look at cool um Corey what would you say would be the hallmarks of a successful camp like how how would you personally judge whether a campaign was successful or not well honestly it's a little bit more subjective because I would kind of base it on the client's happiness on mm -hmm. one level because sometimes yeah there are those unrealistic clients but sometimes you feel like you did a bad job on a campaign but the client is completely happy and stoked on it and so I that know. is that is still a successful campaign in my opinion um really it's just how hard did you work on the campaign will determine whether or not it was as, as successful as it could have been um sometimes campaigns just don't click and in those situations i would definitely try to get feedback from the journalist that's one of the beauties of also working in music journalism is that i can ask someone like say i sent something to greg yeah. i could be like hey why didn't this click for you or if i sent something to you know metal sucks and they're like me i can ask and i can give that feed, you know the journalist said you guys needed to up your production quality or this needed to be worked on or that needed to be worked on and i can at least bring some value to the client even if it isn't like the most ideal situation cool um one way that i one way that i would judge the uh, success of the campaign would be volume of placements but that can't always be the thing because you can also have a where it's complete crap so I mean, you want to have volume, but at the same time, you also want to look at the fact of like, what are they saying? What are they not saying? Is it positive? Is it negative? Is Are people just opening up the promo and just totally trashing it? Because you could get a lot of placements and still have a failure because of the fact that nobody liked it, but they, everybody covered it. I've had that happen too. Um, okay, so Holly, let's say that you're, okay. So let's say that you get, you, uh, get a campaign done what happens after the campaign wraps? I know you've only had like one campaign actually wrapped so far, but what would happen? Mm, I mean, a part of it is, well, I mean, I, I, are you talking like release day onwards or like just- Well, afterwards? the month, contract's done, yeah. they've done three months, they've done their two months, they've done their one month, what happens? Or what, what should think, happen? Yeah, I mean, I think it's good to do a wrap up with the client, um, like we had a call with John and that's really nice to just sort of go over things you know see how they feel what they're happy with if there is anything i don't know extra that they they want to look at um any plans for the future things like that it's always nice to just sort of talk over um and sending out a list of everything that they have got so like a full um like sort of press summary so that people know exactly what they've got and they can access it if they want to because they've got the links Fair enough. Um, or Corey, what, what would you say would be a good way to wrap up things? I, I agree with Holly. Definitely um, going over what happened, you know, with the client to not only identify what we did well, but areas where we might be able to improve next time. Um, definitely giving them a massive list of everything that we got them. Um, oh. <laughs> Hopefully. I'm, I'm optimistic. Mm. It's a massive list every time. Um, Hopefully. <laughs> Optimism here. Optimism. Think positively. Positive. Just clarifying that, 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 oh, hopefully. Go ahead. And then also maybe discussing what their plans for the, the future are, because one of the biggest pitfalls that bands kind of fall into is that they will do this press cycle for three months and then drop off the face of the earth for the rest mm -hmm. of the like next three years. Uh -huh. and then wonder why their next album didn't do so well it's because everybody forgot that you existed uh -huh. um so maybe offering them some additional guidance on things that they can work on while they're not necessarily recording or touring either one but ways to keep people engaged like hey if you know down the road you come up with a playthrough that kind of a thing just encouraging them to remain active yep one thing that i also also comes in handy uh, especially with things like reaction videos and playlists that we get people placed on. Yep. Um, you can reshare that content. Yep. Like 
to, to no end, really. I mean, there's a band that I follow that they, they reshare their reaction videos quite frequently. And it's because every time you reach a new set of your audience. So that's where that big list comes in handy. I agree. Um, one other thing I like to do as well, a lot of the time, I don't do this every time, but most of the time, I'll, I'll usually try to um, keep in touch with the client afterwards for at least a period of like a few weeks, minimally. Um, maybe like if new interviews come in, like form interviews or something like that, I'll get them to do those as well. Or if there's like an opportunity for a playlist, like Corey said, get them on the playlist or sharing stuff of theirs or something like that. I usually try to do that for at least a few weeks after. So that way there's like a little bit of extra stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and so Holly, let's say that you had a client that was furious with the results. They didn't like what you were doing. What would you do in that circumstance out of curiosity? Well, to be honest, I've never been in that circumstance. So I'm kind of yet to know myself how I will actually react to it. What if um, you did? I, I think it's like, I would try and, I don't know, calmly discuss why it is that they're not happy with it. Because it, you know, it might be that, yeah, they really wanted to get a Mel Hammer or something like that. And you kind of think, well, okay, it's not happened this time, but you never know, like, if you keep releasing stuff, if you keep doing PR campaigns, if you keep working on growing your audience, it may happen. But even if it doesn't happen, you know, you've still engaged and reached with other people through other means. So it's kind of, I think sometimes, yeah, <clears throat> brands maybe get focused on particular publications or particular things like that. And it's kind of, you need to realize, but you know, you're getting all this engagement elsewhere. So yep. don't ignore what is happening just because something else isn't happening. Um, cool. And I guess sort of going over any areas for improvement, whether that's like a, from PR side of things, but also maybe from the band side of things as well. So we think, okay, well, what could you do to like improve your chances? You know, so maybe working on social media stuff or things like that. Cool. Um, one thing I do want to go over super quickly, and I got a couple more things for Holly before we wrap up, but uh, Corey yesterday mentioned a very good point to me, which is about sometimes when, like, let's say if the client, it wasn't quite in this sense, Corey, but you're going to know what I'm talking about. Um, like sometimes you'll be asking the wrong person at a publication for coverage and you should be asking someone else so for example like a decibel they've got like i think 15 writers or something like that you might be sometimes you might realize after you've been hitting up decibel you've been hitting up the wrong person for that style so sometimes you got to just go after a different person so if the client's unhappy they wanted to get for example decibel and you for example reached out to i don't know sean fraser and he said, no, I'm not interested. You might just have to reach out to a different person in order to get the results. Mm -hmm. And sometimes as well, um, even after you've already tried uh, a certain publication, but the client really wants you to try again, sometimes you, you just get it. That happens too. Like if you ask one more time, uh, Corey, can you go over that super quickly? I know I kind of paraphrased you. Yeah. Um, and that's where coming in and asking like, so we, we all have our own set of contacts and our own set of people. Let's say, let's use Sean, for example. Yep. Sean is a contact at Decibel. And if he's not the right person and I'm not getting really anywhere with him, I'm going to ask him who the right person is. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. And there's sometimes where it's like, you know, that the person that you're contacting isn't the reviewer. The metal injection, for example, has one guy that really coordinates all of the reviews. Yep. It's not me. It's not Greg, but one of my contacts, if somebody is pitching me for a review, can say, are you the right person? Or who is the right person? And I mean, it's not really a secret who, it's all on the website, but I can direct people to who the right person is. So just asking is one of the biggest things that people forget to do. Yep, always 100% of the time. Um, were you gonna say something else, Corey? Nope. Okay, I thought I cut yeah. you off first. Fine. Um, okay, so Holly, so um, how long would you recommend people to work on a campaign for? I think it depends partly what they're doing. I mean, I guess as a general rule, I'd probably lean more towards like the three months um, yep. because time goes so quickly <laughs> and mm -hmm. they like approach you so quickly and you suddenly realize, oh no, we've got this deadline and this deadline and this deadline. Um, and I just think it, it gives you room in case something happens. So say you, I don't know, band are planning to film a video and then that gets delayed or yeah. something, else, something else goes wrong. You've still got a few weeks where you think, okay, we can't release the video on this date, so we could push it back two weeks and it's still possible to try and get pressed for it. 
Um, so there's that side of things. And also I think it's important to spend like as much time as possible just trying to build up awareness that the bands exist in the first place because it's amazing how many audiences do not know that people are out there. It's not that they're ignoring them, it's just they don't know you exist. Yeah. Um, so I kind of think as much time as possible both sort of leading up to a release but also afterwards just to keep trying to broaden your horizons a bit I think is really important. I agree I, I think three months is usually uh, the minimum amount of time if, you, if a band can do four months I think it's even better but three months mm -hmm. is usually best for optimum results but I do want to point out too that even if you do get a three-month campaign um, one thing that bands always need to look at is the release date see who else is coming out around that time period. And it's not an exact science, um, but a good example is with the Kiaville, we had them land in between Cannibal Corpse and Gojira. We still fucking killed it, but that could have been murder if we hadn't like known about that. Like a lot of times bands won't even look to see who's coming out around at the same time, coast along, and then they wonder why they didn't get much press. It's because they didn't realize that, you know, for example, Cannibal Corpse was coming out that week or whatever. Uh, Corey, do you want to add anything to that before I move on to the final stuff with Holly? Um, the only thing I'd want to add to that is <clears throat> even if you have your heart set on a release date and we look at the calendar and we say, oh no, this is a bad release date. If there is not something set in stone, like say you have distribution through a label that says, no, you can't move your release date. If your release date is not set in stone, it is probably good to listen when we say you should move these things because... Yeah. There's a, there's a reason, like with um, Akiavel, we couldn't move it because distributor wasn't gonna work with us on that. But we made the best of the situation that we could and it still worked out well, but it would it potentially could have been even better were we not sandwiched between two gigantic bands. And I wanna point out, we still did a phenomenal job. That band did better than probably 90% of the other releases that came out that month, even though it was like sandwiched in between because we knew what was going on and we made the best of the situation that we had. And we knew we had to work double as hard, triple as hard probably just to get, get any results. So what happened still went off well. Um, so Holly, um, actually I got two more things for you before we wrap up super quickly. So number one, what do you like best about me and Corey? And it's gotta be, and you gotta say something good. Okay. Putting you on the spot. Um... I like that it's sort of, mm, how do I phrase this? You're not afraid to just sort of go for things. So like, you know, like the compilation, I don't know exactly when the idea for that, for the album came out, but you guys are just like, okay, let's just run with it. And not only we're going to run with it, we're going to like make it as amazing as possible. And like, you know, carrying on like with the podcast, like the amount that you guys do and just sort of making everything grow um, as well as it can do. I like that because it kind of, I mean, obviously, I know you guys have sort of asked me this, but I know that you guys are in it for the long haul as well as me, if that makes yep. sense. Yep, 100%. Uh, yeah, I, that that is, that, I like that about us too, is that Corey is always good with like running with things with me 99.9% .9 of the time. If I say, if I say I want to do it now, she's into it. Also, half the time she does stuff, but without even telling me and just fucking <laughs> moves ahead. <laughs> That does happen. Oh, right. should, should I do this? Yeah, it's a great idea. Don't worry about it. I've already done it. Okay. <laughs> it's all done. Don't worry about it. You're nice. too late. Second to answer. You're not that bad, but I'm, I'm exaggerating slightly. Um, so it's let's turn around. Seconds to answer. I've done everything myself. You're fired. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, so Corey, uh, what, do you, what do you like best about working with Holly? Again, it's that... that <clears throat> zen personality you're really hard to fluster which is super important in this industry or if you are easy to fluster you hide it really really well <laughs> there's, there's a little bit of hiding but yeah you know I, I think I cope with it reasonably hopefully. I mean this industry is really hard so it's it's a necessary trait to have I agree 100%. Um, what I really appreciate about Holly is that she does pretty much everything that she's asked with no complaints, does it well. Um, I've never heard an argument from you to date. Um, even things that I think you're gonna argue about, you've never argued about. Um, you put up with our the hazing and you put up with our weirdnesses and all the rest of it and you have not once threatened to leave. And you keep saying that you're sticking around, which is just kind of like amazing to me. Um, Cause most people would have just like, fucking said you guys are weirdos and i'm, I'm leaving this <laughs> and we're in a call 
So I, I do appreciate that about you. Um, you are a sticker, sticker, sticker. Yeah, sticker, a sticker. But anyway, <laughs> we, we, we do love you, Holly, and we really appreciate having you. Um, so final, final, final thing. Uh, what is your, are any words of advice that you have for bands who wish to, or sorry, how should a band reach out to you uh, in order to have a campaign run? Mm. Well, I guess email me is probably best because then I can keep a track of everything. Um, I know I get random messages for bits of journalism or sometimes bits of PR over like social media and stuff. And I just, I lose track of it. It, it, sure. it Yeah. Or I'm not in a you know situation to respond or do anything about it. So I generally say email me. Cool. Um, what should they include when they contact you? Preferably at least some examples of the music they're going to release. Cool. Um, I know some people sometimes do the thing of like including previously released stuff and that's great, but I don't know that the new stuff is going to be yeah. like the same quality or, or things like that. Yeah. Um, and I just say as much information as possible, like biographical social media links, so I can go and, you know, stalk all your social media and make sure you're doing that properly or at least figure out if you need help with it. Um, and maybe a rough idea of a release date. Cool. Just again for time scales. Cool. Uh, Corey, do you have anything you want to add on what bands should include? No, Holly summed it up pretty well. Um, yeah, just make sure that you include as much detail as you can. Uh, e like, even if you're still working on your tracks, at least let us know that part. Mm. Um, yeah, so just as much detail as you can is my advice. Yeah. And if you send demos, just you're trying to feel us out for later in the year, that's totally fine too. But you have to realize as well that we will want to check the finished product as a very first thing. But if you want to send demos, you can do that. But again, we cannot guarantee anything until we hear the fi final finished product. Mm -hmm. um, also, I, I also want to point out, if you do contact Holly or you do contact Corey or you do contact uh, Gaia about a campaign and you don't contact me directly, um, or even if you do contract tech me directly, if you say anything mean about any of them, or if you say, or if you do anything weird, we will not accept you in any way, shape, or form. I have had people say weird shit, and I have automatically deleted the email because of that. Really? Um, Why? What they said? I'm not going to say it. I'll tell you guys what's going on. Okay. But um, I, ha I have had I have had people do that, and. Um, Anyways, they, they get deleted right off the bat and uh, we will not touch your campaign in any way, shape or form. So if, if you come on and you start going like, Holly's pretty or something like that, we're getting off. Holly's like, what are you? wait, 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 <laughs> just kidding. Um, so yeah, make, make sure you don't put anything weird in your submission and just you know be respectful. But if we do turn you down, it's not necessarily uh, bearing on the quality of your music. Just sometimes we don't we're not into it is the only thing for for us like i've had bands that i'm just not into the style but i know they'll do well at other places so i just turn them down do you have any final words corey not from me no holly any final words from you no i think i think we've covered quite a lot whether whether we meant to cover all of the stuff that we did i don't know but we've covered a lot we did ask <laughs> off the rails holly it always asks about the rail so where do people follow you on social media um you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You, I think if you search Holly F. Royal or Holly Francis Royal, I should come up. Um, my Instagram name is a bit weird. It's called Unquiet Slumbers. It's not a BDSM thing. It's a Wuthering Heights thing. Okay. Just getting that out there in case people start making assumptions. I, I didn't know. I'm so glad you clarified it. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's not, it's not weird. It's not my Instagram. It's not weird. It's totally, oh, totally weird. Yeah, it's totally, <laughs> totally weird. Okay, and with that, I'm going to say party on, Corey. Party on, Curtis. Party on, Holly. Party.